Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to Love Reading. You're here with Najman Sari. Today, I hope I do justice. I'm looking at another, uh, for me, a bit of a heavy book, but I enjoyed reading it thoroughly, and I'd like to bring it to the fore for you to have a look for those who are interested in um, a Sufi-leaning Sufi path. So this is a beautiful book called, uh, the English translation is the, the Book of Illumination, and it's... Uh, this is the book, and it's translated by Scott Kugel, and it is by Ibn Ataullah Sikandri. And I'll try to give you a little bit of his background as well. But the, the, the Arabic uh, title is Kitab At-Tanweer Fi Isqat Al-Tadbir. And we, when we studied this book, we took forever just getting those, the names of what individually everything means. And it took us so long, and then the translation came out, and it was, okay, the Book of Illumination, that's what it is. So uh, first, just a bit on I I Ibn Atallah um, uh, Sikandari. He is from the line of the Shadali community, and he follows the Sheikhs uh, al-Mursi, and then it's Ibn Atallah, and, and their um, uh, predecessor was Ibn Shadali, who started this, this, uh, this tariqah. Uh, and then, uh, so I wanted to go and give you where this At-Tanbir Fisqat At-Tadbir came from and what was the purpose of it. It says At-Tanbir is the enlightenment, the, 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 the nur that you get, Fi Isqat At-Tadbir, when you let go of selfish calculation. So you need to realize that everything is in the tadbir of Allah. Okay, in the mashiyat of Allah, you need to do what you do. So he's not saying sit back and fiddle your thumbs, but it's saying that you you need to a the tawakkul, so that all comes up and everything, but the the freedom you need to find, and we did this with the intentions, every, every action is by intention. You intend something, but then you let it go. We say the risk comes from Allah. We say, you know, so I think I'm tying my camel, I think I'm doing this, I think I'm doing that. But at the end of the day, um, it is by Allah's decree that that will happen or not happen. And the, one of the beautiful examples, again, I do, I, I'm not going into reading into it, but uh, it's like when Nu was uh, in, in the ark and then he's calling his son, come. And the ark says, no, I'll just go to the mountain and that's how I'm going to be saved. So he's using his calculation, his aqal, he's using his thing to think it's going to save him. But it didn't save him. So those examples are used that rather than you concentrate on on your calculations, if I do this, this is going to happen. It's really taking the carpet under your feet to realize that, yes, you do what you have to do. We still have to plant the seed. We still have to plant, even if Qiyama is coming. We still have to do what we have to do. But you learn to desist from things. And basically, it, it gives that hope that ultimately it's all in Allah's hand. Yes, I'm cooking. Maybe my gas ran out. Maybe this happened. Maybe something. I can't make the iftar on time. So... All of that comes under that you learn to give up control. You learn to give up thinking that you are in charge. And you know, and, and we often talk about, oh, that mother or that father, that mother-in-law, somebody, they're all very controlling and they want to have decide and do everything for their children's sake because they know better and so on. So this this book was a beautiful read. If you can read it with a teacher, it's all the better because I've loved the few books that we've read in the, uh, we, we read it straight from the Arabic. Our teacher would read us a passage in the Arabic and then he would translate it to us. And you know, that as a way of learning, as a way of um, understanding, is 
sometimes more authentic than reading a translation cover to cover with nobody to actually guide you in it. So it uh, and like it says, so there's this methodology of trying to overcome self preoccupation and fear for one's sustenance is not current for today's day. But that's why that uh, when. Uh, you sat with somebody like Ibn Atala Sikandari, he, whatever he learned from his teachers, Abul Hassan al-Shadili and uh, of the 12th century and Sheikh Mursi, and he's the third in line of that, of that silsila. Um, it's like, how are you able to be in the garden, with uh, enter with Allah's presence, and now we have the Hajj, then we are doing that in Ramadan. When your mind is still caught up in the dunya of what this, ha what's going to happen with this, I'm not suggesting that you don't go and f fix your car and your flat tire and what you have to do. You, you do what you need to do. It's not, and and I'm not able to. Um, share the depth of the book, but the, the beauty is that what gets left behind is that you learn to be in a bit of solace of letting go, yalla, I've done what I can, I've called up the whatever the uh, CCT, whatever initials you want to take of somebody to fix this or fix that, the telecom or whatever else, and, and now I leave it in your hands. So yes, we tie our camel, but then we also trust on that. So he, and what I loved about the book, that there were so many always references that, um, for, straight from the Quran again. So it's linking it very, it is a Sufi book. Sometimes we, you know, we have people who are sort of wondering about this and that. But when you read a book that is so connected with giving you reference from the Quran, there's a beautiful learning in it. So uh, I, there were a few that I wanted to bring out to share with you that um, uh, about, uh, so I'm just going to read, uh, read you one of his passages from it. It says, surely those who are righteous and act in a way of the wakul, of taqwa with Allah are in the places of rivers and gardens. And that is from the, your sincerity of trusting the powerful sovereign. So how could you give thanks and uh, and you're ex uh, and you need to acknowledge that whatever it happens whether it goes right or it goes wrong it is for your benefit it is for your benefit so see you experience no blessing except that what comes from Allah so when it's coming from Allah and uh, Azrat Ali's call which he says that I know my Allah best by the non fulfillment of my decisions of what I did you know that's how I know it that when I wanted some uh, a certain way and things don't go that way that's how I know that this Allah is in charge of it so um, and then it's in uh, telling you to go to the extra mile of doing goodness and uh, I'm still trying to see where and because sometimes these books are so heavily laden on so much good that if you can open your insights uh, to accept divine decree for what it is and, you, uh, and we are able to shift our gear that there has to be a mercy. And again, you need to be able to look at whatever comes your way, that there has to be a mercy, even what's happening in Palestine. There has to, they are the ones suffering, but if that helps me come right, the, there can only be goodness for them that their suffering enabled other people to come to, on track. That kind of situation, and by the same token, if something's happening to us and we are feeling where did this thunderbolt tilt me from? That maybe our purpose of living also, it's not about me, what I'm doing, what I'm learning, what I'm developing, what I'm coming to, you know, my growth, my this, my that. Life's maybe not about me. All this growth, all this whatever I think I'm moving on, hopefully towards Allah, is really for the benefit of somebody else. It's really, I'm just there as a sideline prop for the life of somebody else. And it's for the, whatever they benefit from, my example or something, it's about that is, which is the more important factor in it? For each of us, our life, my way, my doing is what is central in my life. And everything else is peripheral. But maybe what I am the periphery 
for something else. Because when we say that no leaf falls without Allah's permission and Allah knows it, so even the leaf serves a purpose. Even the leaf has had a purpose, it, whatever the shade it gave, the colors it gave, whatever nutrition, however it helped, uh, whichever animal that fed on it. So uh, th th those are the, uh, the, the things. But uh, for me, the beautiful, uh, just going into understanding what it means to be a uh, doing, don't taking that the tadbir is in your hand. It's not there. It's rather that it's by Allah and his wisdom that, that we need to be living by. So I really don't think I've done at all um, uh, justice to, to the book uh, and to why the name or what it's for, uh, it's how it's meant to be. But it is uh, the, the other beautiful book that he's written, which is shorter, plithia, bullet points, and everything today is about being bullet point, is a hikam. hikam. And that has uh, sort of words of wisdoms and uh, uh, by Ibn Atawla Sikandri. Um, and uh, just like call it words of wisdom or quotable quotes. And, um, and that's also a beautiful book, but I enjoyed this thoroughly because sometimes if in your life when you get uh, a book that really wants to tell you to shift your paradigm of where you are. And within the Western context, that's why it was so useful when we did it, is that we are so used to cause and effect, cause and effect. We do this and this gets, and this opens up this whole new thing. And they tell us that what you see is a fraction of what you don't see. So reality is always dual, the ghaib and the present. So no, that whatever is going on here, and even the shaheed and so many shaheed of Gaza, the, what is going on in the barzakh and in the unseen is so much greater, and, and in what good place they are. It doesn't mean that we don't protest. It doesn't mean that we don't support what, what's, been, what's been submitted to the International Court of Justice and so on. We do what we can within it, but then know that the control, it's just, this whole book is designed to, to bring you back that the control is in Allah's hand. And yes, even when we read our Quran, when we read other things, the tawakkul is also there. But sometimes when, you know, lame, well, he wasn't a lame man, it's Imam Ibn al-Tawla Sikandri, but by giving references time again from examples from this, uh, his surroundings, all that is there to teach you. Uh, um, the illumination that comes by giving up control, of control of wanting to decide or wanting to be in charge of how decisions are going to go. So uh, really it's very liber liberating. Uh, I know we had a sheikh and he said, you know, the best choice is to not have a choice. It's when we have these 10,000 choices going this way and that way, that that's when we go absolutely bananas so and we don't know what to do. And the same thing with about doubt. The more choice you have, the more you are just wasting time in the 10,000 choices that you have. So just be trusting, Ya Allah, guide me. Even to, you know, that's why those istikhara duas are beautiful. Ya Allah, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I do this or do I do that? And then trusting, because the whole point in istikhara is that that avenue will open up. So that's, I, I'm not sure at all I did justice, but it was a beautiful book to those who are inclined into wanting to read about tariqahs and about the sheikhs of the tariqah. This is one of, and the beautiful thing is that he was so steeped and grounded in his fiqh. So he was actually a fiqh person, a legalistic person, and then he went into being uh, the uh, uh, being the, the sheikh that he was. And his qabr is in, in Egypt and uh, in Cairo, in the outskirts. I didn't manage to go see it, but it was also, you know, sometimes these beautiful people, which we're getting to know now, for many, for a long time, they were also kept obscure. People didn't know about them. But now more and more, because there is interest in this, and yes, just to bring back that the it was published by Fons Vitae, a beautiful um, publication from the States, and they've done a lot of good books on Imam Ghazali and others, and maybe I'll have a look at that too. But they brought out good books and sort of, 
uh, hidden treasures have re-emerged. So if, if you do come across any book from Franz Vitae, have a look, look at it. A lot of the translation, uh, translators are from the West, Muslims, uh, and some maybe non-Muslims, but um, it's, it's a good place to also start your journey into wanting to love reading and looking at you know deeper books so with that um forgive me if i haven't been as uh, at all um convincing in what i've tried to say about um wanting to read this book the book of illumination by uh, ibn ataullah sikandri who died in the 13 uh, in 1309 that's the 14th century but uh, it's just to give you a glimpse of all the beautiful, the wide flavor of beautiful things we have in our faith. So with that, I'll call it a day today. And inshallah, just remember me in your duas. And I remember all of you out there in your duas, in my duas. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>